Now that we have seen the various terms that come into the differential form of momentum conservation, let's put it all together to see what the final form of the equation look like. In, so in the x-direction, this is the final form of, the, uh, of momentum conservation. So these two terms represent the force in the x direction and this is all written per unit volume and this is for an infinite small fluid particle don't forget that this is all written for an infinite small fluid particle and on the left hand side we have mass times acceleration in the x direction and again this is per unit volume which is why you get the density here and hopefully, because of the earlier explanation, you have a good idea of what are the physical principles embedded in each of those terms. For instance, we saw that that term, this, this term over here, represents the acceleration in the x direction, the contribution to the acceleration in the x direction due to motion of the fluid particle in the y direction. And similarly, you get um, the f equal to ma in the y direction, okay? So that's the corresponding uh, equation for, for the y direction momentum balance. And there are assumptions embedded in these equations. Um, so that's also very important. We assume that the flow is steady and we assumed that the flow density was constant. In fact, it turns out that, you know, these, these two terms the acceleration and the pressure term will um, actually the yeah will stay the same um, when you relax that assumption. But this term, you know, it has incompressibility embedded in it, and it also has the Newtonian assumption embedded in it. So when you know you need both those assumptions to be valid to get that form of the um, the viscous force on the infinite small fluid particle. In vector form, one can write it in this way. So this is a compact way to write that. And if you're not familiar with the del operator and the Laplacian, you might want to look it up. And in this form, we can readily extend to three-dimensional cases. So this form applies to three-dimensional. You can write a vector in 3D. Uh, you, it also applies to the form, you know, to other coordinate systems. And when we do the um, CFD case study in fluent for a laminar pipe flow, we will solve these equations in a cylindrical coordinate system. And we have to couple these equations to continuity. So you have du dx plus dv dy is equal to zero, or in the vector form, it's del dot v equal to zero. So we have three partial differential equations, and we have three unknown fields. We have u, we have p, and we have v. So we have enough equations uh, to find those three fields, but these equations are, first of all, partial differential equations. They're coupled, and they're nonlinear because you have you know, this unknown term is multiplying a derivative of an unknown, which is also unknown. And that's why this, it makes it very difficult to solve these equations exactly or analytically. And there's very few situations where you can solve this analytically. And we will use ANSYS Fluent to solve these equations approximately. I should mention that you know, when you knock off the viscous terms, you can integrate these equations and get the Bernoulli's equation. But you have to be very careful where you apply the Bernoulli's equation. One of the biggest misconceptions I see in students' minds, and you know this was true of myself too, is the indiscriminate application of the Bernoulli's equation. In fact, I have had students tell me that, you know, I, when I ask them, it's like, what is a mathematical model that answers fluent to solving? And they tell me it's a Bernoulli's equation. I said, no, you've got to go back to the drawing board and make sure you understand what those equations are. So the Bernoulli's equation is applicable in very special circumstances or in particular parts of the flow where viscosity is not important. So you have to be very careful when you apply it. So we've seen the differential form of momentum conservation. 
um, we will solve these using ANSYS Fluent, which uses the finite volume method. And the finite volume method is actually uh, based on the integral form of mass and momentum conservation. So let's take a look at the integral form of the conservation equations next.